Hi everyone, this is Muff Fanatics. And welcome, this is Muff Fanatics, where we are crazy about sport. My name is Carol Redul. I am a sports fan. People think I'm a sports journalist, but I'm not. I'm a sports fan. And uh, I've been fortunate enough to find a career that I both love and can pay the bills. And uh, yeah, I come from a family of, uh, we were four kids, we're now two, lost two brothers to cancer and my dad, so it's me, my sister, my mom, and yeah, that's about it. Talking about sport, if I can put it in a nutshell, both local sport and foreign sport, um, the basis of course is social media. Um, if 2020 taught us anything is that uh, Kenyans were ready to embrace um, uh, entertainment and programming uh, more on social media. They did it before, but not as much as when we found ourselves behind closed doors with uh, basically nothing to do. You can't leave the house. All you have is your social media. So um, we found out that Kenyans are actually very receptive to programming on social media. I had been starting an online show for three years. I guess I got pushed into the deep end when I found myself at home idle, bored, realizing I'm not even speaking to my audience because we had to get off radio. Remember, we had to literally minimize what we do outside the house when COVID hit. So um, I just realized I'm losing a little bit of touch with my fan base. So I decided to start uh, online shows. Um, a friend of mine pushed me and pushed me and said, you've been doing this for three years, do it, it's time. Um, so it's just expanding my social media network because uh, I already spoke to people on social media, but more through text. Um, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Now I started two shows. Um, the first show I started was Radul Live because it was easier, because it was just me and one other person or two other people um, discussing sport. And uh, so that's the show, me and the sports people. And then later on in the year, we decided uh, to start My Fanatics, which is a show I do with Roy and Kiani, which we were doing a radio show for almost uh, what, 14 years together. And we decided why not take it online. People have been telling us, we want to see your faces, we want to see your reactions. Um, we want to laugh with you, not at you, you know. So we started that second show, which is My Fanatics. Hi everyone, this is Radul Live. Thanks for joining us. Every Saturday, 1 to 2 p.m. We. What I love about Radul Live is the fact that because I'm interviewing sports newsmakers, it's 100% local. Um, unless a big foreign person comes into the country, um, which I can get on the show, but it was intentional that it was about Kenyans getting to know Kenyan sportsmen and women. Some of them we know by name, like especially the runners, the marathoners. If you ask people, they'll know Eliud, they'll know um, Rudisha. They will not know how some of these athletes look. So I thought, why not start a show where people can get to know Kenyan sports news makers or Kenyan sportsmen and women, um, especially when it comes to football. We know the Harambe stars, those who know the players' names don't know what they look like. Those who know the coaches' names in the Kenyan Premier League don't know what they look like. Um, so it was about getting to know Kenyan sportsmen and women and addressing some of their issues because you, when you speak a lot to Kenyan sports people, they all have issues and their issues are very similar. It's lack of investment, lack of facilities, um, disorganization, they feel they're taken advantage of, they're neglected, unless they win something, they're bought breakfast, you know, things like that. Sport is a job for sports people and they should get paid as if it is a job. Unfortunately, we have a government that thinks sport is a hobby. It's that thing you do over the weekend. It's what your kids do after school. No, it is a job and it's a damn big industry worldwide. When you look at some of the figures that people are earning, um, whether it's European football, whether it's basketball, whether it's golf, whether it's tennis, you know, these people live, they get paid top dollar. They live lavish lifestyles because they're adored by the fans. And every corporate who comes into sponsorship wants to, wants to reach those fans. So that is why worldwide sport commands top dollar and I ask myself if we have so many people who are talented and we do in all sport we have people who are so talented why can't they make a living through sport you know why do our um, football ladies have to get side hustles 
why do our rugby players, we look at Kenya Sevens, you look at the Collins and Geras of this world and, and Andrew Amondes and we think, oh, those guys are professional rugby players. Actually, they're not. They're amateur rugby players. They're semi-professional because professional means you wake up in the morning, you pay, play rugby and you get paid for it and you get paid well for it. Unfortunately, all our Kenya Sevens players, either they're students or they have jobs. So rugby is what they do in the evenings or early in the mornings. When we see our Kenya Sevens players playing against South Africa, we're like, why can't we never be South place, beat South Africa? But you know what happens in South Africa? The rugby player wakes up in the morning, he goes for training, he goes for rest, he goes for massage, he goes for mental whatever. He's prepared to play rugby. And that is why they are so good. Our guys have to go to work nine to five like me and you, then, they play their sport. So they have to make ends meet, you know, in a different way. Why? And this is the talent they have. Why can't we look at, you have a talent in journalism, you know? You get paid for that talent, you know? And you can pay your bills with that talent. Sport is not the same in this country. People have to um, uh, find something else to do. So I feel it is so important for us to begin to take sport as the job it is and begin to play, pay, get our players paid as the job it is. For the longest time, I'm not guilty of anything, but for the longest time I used to be told, Radul, why aren't you highlighting women's football as much as you highlight men's football? And I was of the opinion, let me try and fix one first, because if you don't fix one, you'll never fix the other. But then I've also come to realize that, no, why can't I, one, and, and I put fix in a lot of quotes because it's not a one person solution to fix anything, yeah? But I said, okay, why can't I lend my voice to both, uh, for starters? And I've been interviewing quite a, a few women footballers and hockey players and basketballers. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, I'm so honored today to have these two amazing athletes, I can call you that, on the show. But you're right, women have different issues. One, by the way, their issues start from childhood when they say they want to go into sport. Your parent looking at you like, what? To do what? No, go and be a teacher or go and do something, go and be a journalist, go and do something else. So women already face resistance right from the home when they say they want to go into sport. Then when they get into the sport, of course there are the health issues that, and most of the coaches are, used to be men, nowadays you're seeing more and more women coaching women's teams, which I'm happy for, but women have health issues that men don't have. So I'm not gonna be, at the top of my game for 28 or 30 days uh, a month. I'm gonna have those four days when I need to take it easy and you need to understand. Um, and then we have the whole issues of, um, in some of the teams, I'm not saying all the teams where women are taken advantage of um, in a sexual manner, it's, it's been seen to happen. Um, I don't know, they just feel that women, the minute you put on short shorts, you're giving me an invitation. And I'm like, no, um, that is how they play certain sports. Um, so women do have it harder and then there's less focus on women. We saw Harambe stars being given 250 million the other day. Women have never, women footballers have never seen that kind of money. Harambe starlets have never seen 250 million shillings. And this is because Harambe stars got to Afcon for the first time in 14 years. Harambe starlets have been doing it. They've won the regional Sakafa tournament. They've, uh, they reached the final the other year. Um, they've been going to women's uh, Afcon. Do you see them even being given 10, 20 million? Did you hear anything about women? Why not? Why have a rumba stylist not been getting the same support as the men get when they achieve something, you know? Women's football, when there are no facilities, women's matches are played in the morning. Because we had no we re were renovating Nyayo forever and a day, we had literally Kasarani sometimes, which you can't afford because the league is charged. Clubs are charged to play in Kasarani and it's expensive. I think it's 35,000 shillings, money they don't have. So they used to use Kamtoyoyo or they use um, the Tasca grounds at, um, at, um, uh, on Fika Road. So women had to play league games in the morning. You wake up and go, and, yeah, because that's the only time you can find. This morning, I called a communication official because I wanted fixtures for women's, the women's game. And he said, okay, I have fixtures for the season, but they change because when there are no grounds, they can't play or they have to play in the morning or they have to play the day before. So. While men can say we have these facilities for the season, women have to wait until the Kenyan Premier League for men is sorted out. Then are there any grounds left for the women to play on? Okay, let them play. 
So we're already treated like second class citizens in simple things, you know. If what Harambe Starlet has achieved with less support, you can't believe it. What the Kenya women's volleyball team, the Malkia Strikers, have managed, they've been African. Africa, they're either champions or second, champions or second, champions or second of Africa. And they're usually second to Cameroon. Cameroon send their, their national team to go and train in either South America or Eastern Europe, which are the powerhouses of women's volleyball in the world. So when you see uh, Malkia Strikers beating Cameroon, we're beating a team that has had almost a year of planning. As if we're lucky, they get to play against the men's volleyball clubs. That is how uh, Malkia Strikers train for international tournaments. Um, last time they had lights switched off at Kasarani. I don't know if you remember that incident. We had to complain. I went on Twitter and suddenly they got lights um, to, to train at Kasarani for a continental event. So that is what our women volleyballers, who are already champions, go through. I won't even get into other women's sports. So I just, these things need to be highlighted and those in office need to be working towards rewarding these people to become great. We tend to celebrate with you when you've achieved, you know? How many people knew what Eliud Kipchoge was up to until he was running, you know? And when he came back, every Tom, Dick and Harry wanted to be associated with him. Where were you several years earlier when he was training? Like they say, the champion becomes a champion in the months and days before any tournament or any game. Not on the day he's running, but the day he's running and winning are the days Kenya's taking notice.